Okay, here we have a question that ultimately is going to be a diluted earnings per share question. So let's go ahead and read our question and see where we are. At the beginning of the fiscal year, June 1st, 2000X0, Boyd Corporation had 80,000 shares of common stock outstanding. Also outstanding was $200,000 of 8% convertible bonds that had been issued at $1,000 par. The bonds were convertible into 20,000 shares of common stock. However, no bonds were converted during the year. The company's tax rate is 34%, and the AA bond interest rate has been 10%. Boyd's net income for the year was 107,000. The question then is the diluted earnings per share rounded to the nearest cent of Boyd common stock for the fiscal year ended May 31st, 2000X1 was how much? Well, there's a number of steps we're going to go through. First, we're going to calculate the basic earnings per share. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate the EPS effect of that convertible bond. And then finally, after we do all of that, we will be able to calculate diluted earnings per share. So those are the three steps that we have to go through. All of the information is there. Basic earnings per share is the income available to common shareholders divided by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. We are told that the income available or the net income is 107,000. And we are told that they had 80,000 shares outstanding. Okay, during the period. Everything was outstanding the whole year. The only issue was this uh, convertible bond that had not been converted during the year. And so that's our diluted element. And so our basic earnings per share is 1.33. Okay, that's our basic earnings per share. Now to calculate the EPS effect of the bond, what we need to know is how much interest they won't pay if they, if the bond had been converted, we need to know what the tax implications of that would have been because if they didn't pay interest, their income would have been higher. If their income was higher, they would have had to pay taxes. And then also we need to know how many shares that convertible bond is convertible into. Well, we can start kind of at the, with the denominator. We, they tell us it's convertible into 20,000 shares. Okay, we know that the bond was a $200,000 bond that was paying 8% interest, and so there is $16,000 of interest that they would not be paying if the bonds had been converted. And remember, that's what we're doing in diluted earnings per share, this hypothetical, if the bonds had been converted, what would the earnings per share have been? But if the bonds had been converted and they had $16,000 of higher income, they would have had to pay income taxes on that $16,000 of 34%. And that 34% becomes $5,440 that they would have had to pay in taxes if those bonds had been converted. And so what they would have had was $10,560 of new income available. And do a second calculation here. And there would have been 20,000 shares outstanding. And so the EPS effect of that convertible bond is 0 0.528, 52 to 53 cents. Now, what we need to do is we need to compare that to basic earnings per share to make certain that it is dilutive. And this is a very simple step, but it's one that we have to do because if we don't, and it turns out that it was anti-dilutive, then the diluted earnings per share would be basic earnings per share. Now, in this question, it is dilutive. And so what we need to do is add that EPS effect into basic earnings per share. And what we end up with then is 107,000 plus 10,560. Okay. If the bonds had been converted, there would have been the 107,000 plus that after tax savings on the interest. And there would have been not only the 80,000 originally, but also the 20,000 shares that the convertible bonds are converted into. And so what this would have given us to calculate diluted earnings per share is 117,560 divided by 100,000 shares. And when we do that math and we round, because it tells us we need to round to the nearest penny, is we get $1.18. 
Hey, it's really $1.17.56, but that rounds up to $1.18, and so that gives us choice C is our correct answer. Diluted earnings per share, $1.18. Like I said, don't forget that step of looking at whether or not the EPS effect is lower than basic earnings per share. Most times it is, but they may put one in where it's anti-dilutive, and if it's anti-dilutive, you don't do anything with it. And especially in a situation where there were two items, if there was a convertible bond and a convertible preferred share, two convertible bonds, sometimes in a question like that, one of them is dilutive and one of them is anti-dilutive. So you have to calculate that EPS effect and put them in in the right order, or otherwise you're going to put in something that should not be included in the calculation of diluted earnings per share. And I can guarantee you that incorrect answer is going to be one of the choices. So, Three steps, we calculated basic earnings per share, we calculated the EPS effect, and that allowed us to calculate diluted earnings per share, and we calculated it correctly. $1.18 is the diluted earnings per share for Boyd Corporation.